QuickBooks Online 2022. Add normal expenses to books from Bank Feed Limbo and Make Rules. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page. In the business view, as compared to the accounting view, switching to the accounting view is something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Back to the bank feed practice file. Let's open up a couple tabs to put reports in, right clicking on the tab up top to do so and duplicating it back to the tab to the left one more time right clicking and duplicating again as that is thinking let's see where the reports are located over here in the sample company in the accounting view which is on the left hand side under the reports if we go back on over to the business view in the second tab we're going to be in the business overview section and then we're going to be in the reports we're going to be opening up first one of the favorites, that being the big balance sheet. Going to close up the hamburger and go into the balance sheet. Changing the date range from 0101 uh, 21 to 123121. 21. So we're going to be working in 2021, or I will. I'm going to be running this report. Then nothing's in it thus far because we haven't pulled any information yet that we've transferred in from the bank feeds that is now in what I call bank feed limbo, transferring it into the promised land, which helps us to create the financial statements, which we'll start to do this time. Going to the tab to the right, going back to the business overview. We're going to go back down to the reports. Closing up the hamburger, we're going to open up the P&L, Profit and Loss, otherwise known as the Income Statement, range in the change up top, 010121 to, to 123121, and run that one. Also, of course, nothing in it yet because everything is in bank feed limbo. Let's go help it out. Let's go to the bank feed limbo, give some more information, give some advice, give a little bit of love to the transactions from the bank to bring them on over to the promised land of the financial statements going into then the bookkeeping at the bottom we're going to be up top in the transactions if you were in the accounting view you would then be in the banking section and then in the banking information up top so we're going to go back on over so now i'm going to close up the hamburger once we are in there we transferred this information in we're going to look for some of the the easier types of transactions to enter first oftentimes those are like the end of the month type of transactions so things like paying the utility bills the telephone the electric bill things that are recurrent things that have a, a unique and different uh, vendor each time oftentimes the decreases are going to be easier uh, because they're going to be more standardized the deposits could be different depending on what kind of business we're in so it depends on how we're going to group the deposits we'll talk more about them later but let's first find a transaction a nice easy one let's look at this i'm just going to pick one out here we're going to look at the gas so the socal gas that's going to be a utility type of expense generally and so let's take a look at that one now notice that they're assigning it here. They put it into the services with this automatic assignment. That clearly doesn't seem right because I believe that's gonna be an income account and this is gonna be a decrease. So I don't know where they came out with that, but if I was just to confirm it here, it wouldn't go to the proper account or where we would want it to go. So once again, be careful with that automatic kind of thing here. Even if it was correct, I would still want to add, in this case, the vendor and I would also want to add then a rule so I have more control over where this is going to go in the future as opposed to being reliant on just the guesswork of QuickBooks. So I'm going to go into this transaction here. So we'll click on it. We're going to be in the categorize information for now. I'm going to add then the vendor. So the vendor I'm going to say is going to be the SoCal Gas Company. So I usually I can possibly just copy and paste down here. Now note, we have an electronic transfer for the SoCal Gas Company. That means that uh, likely within the memo section, there's gonna be something I can pull out to be the vendor here. And so I will typically do that. But if I don't do that, 
then I'm not going to have any vendor because the memo, although it might have the vendor name in it, will not be used within QuickBooks to assign the vendor unless, unless you do it as part of this process and as part of the rule. You want to do that because doing that allows you to sort your transactions by vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to set up the vendor. I'm not going to add the detail. I just want the name to be able to sort this information by that particular vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now it's going into services, which again, I don't know why it would be going into the services. I'm going to add and see if I can add another category. Otherwise, no one adds an account. And one reason it might be going there is because I deleted or, or put inactive a lot of the accounts. So I can't really blame QuickBooks for miscategorizing that when I cleaned out the chart of accounts. But I also don't like the adding of categories when I'm in here in the business view. I don't like the layout of it. So if you're going to be adding categories, I would recommend at this time to be using the accounting view. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch to the accounting view, go into the general ledger and add the category there. You can add the category kind of as you go right here. You can typically add the category. But again, if you're in the business view, it's a little bit more difficult of a process in my opinion something that they might change in the future. We'll see what they do. I'm going to go to the tab to the right. I'm going to right click on it and duplicate that tab to make another tab Then I'm going to switch to the accounting view. I'm going to pull it over to the second tab here and then I'm going to change this one to the accounting view hitting the cog up top to do so and then switch to the accounting view. Now you'll recall that I basically got rid of all the categories so that we can go in there. That's the chart of accounts so that we can customize our chart of accounts as we go. You might not want to do that in practice. It depends on what you want to do, but I want to show you how we can basically build from scratch the whole chart of accounts as we basically input the data into our bank feeds or from our bank feeds. So I'm going to go into my accounts now, and then I'm going to go into the chart of accounts. So I'm going to go into accounting, not my account. And there we are in the chart of accounts. Now I'm in the business view. I'm going to close this out. And I'm just going to add another account. So I'm going to hit the plus button. This is going to be the type of account of an expense type of account. So we want to have an expense type of account. And then the subcategory could be utilities if they have it. They may have it. There's the utilities account. And I'm going to put it into utilities. Now also note that utilities has kind of changed over the years. You can have the most kind of leeway as to what your categories are going to be on the expense side of things. Do you want to have a lot of different categories or do you want to have fewer different categories? The more detail you have for the categories, the more detail you have on the reports, but also the more congested they will be, the longer the data input will take and then it's going to be harder to sort through the reports. You can also have a lot of subcategories. Many people like subcategories, but again, you could go overboard with too much detail. Utilities is a good example because it used to be that the telephone was included in there the the electric and possibly the gas possibly water for example would be under then the utilities because the thought was that they were usually pretty small so we're going to group them together instead of breaking them out however the telephone has gotten quite expensive so that's often put out into its own category and then we often have the electric and the and the uh, gas and possibly water for example under utilities still kind of grouped together however if those if those amounts are high for your particular company they're material in and of themselves they're going to be uh, things that you want separate that could affect your decision making then you might want to break them out further and have a separate account for the electric a separate account for the gas another option is you can have an apparent account for the utilities and then sub accounts that will be under the utilities that will then allow you the more detail in a drop down for portion utilities and then having sub accounts of say telephone electric and gas those are some options the sub accounts however although they provide more detail can be collapsed to make the reporting more simple as well they, they still create a, a more detail lo a longer process of data input and a longer uh, standard financial statement in terms of the income statement so i'm just going to put it into utilities and i'm going to save it and close it so there it is let's go to the first tab now you might have to refresh the page up top for it to then pull into this other tab since we basically added the account on the prior tab. Once you refresh the page, then you could go back into this transaction here and you're going to have this information again. I'll go back in and put my vendor up top. 
I'm gonna say there's my vendor. It's already there because we added it before. I'm gonna look for my new category now, which is going to be utilities. Now they're in the dropdown, so that looks good. I'm gonna then go into my tags. I'm not gonna add a tag. The memo is pulling in as it should to give us a bit more detail. Then I'm gonna create a rule for it. So next time, and possibly still this time for multiple time frames, the rule will then pull over the information and make this a more automated step. So what do you want to call the rule? Oftentimes you might call it the same name as for example, the vendor. Sometimes you might have different rules for the same vendor and you get a little bit more complex in the rule. We'll talk more about that later. This is just like the standard process for the rules. And then you got the apply this to the transactions that are either money out or money in. Clearly we're paying the, the uh, gas bill. So it's gonna be a money out type of situation. Then it says all bank accounts. So do I wanna apply it to every bank account? We only have one at this point in time, but if we had multiple bank accounts, every time we paid SoCal, do we want it to do the same thing? Or possibly if I'm using another account, is it gonna be something different? So I'm gonna apply it to all right here because it won't matter because I don't have any other account. And when I do add them, I'm gonna be paying utilities to the utility company anyway. And then include the following in all, so that means that the items, these are the rules down below. We could only have one rule, in which case it doesn't really matter that you can apply all of them or any of them because you only have one rule. But if I had multiple rules, the question would be for the system, should I apply the rule? Should I go through the systems asking here? We have a query from the system. Should I go through these transactions that are entered from the bank? And if any of these conditions that you apply, should I then apply this rule to that transaction? Or should it be a situation where all of these rules must apply before I'm able to apply out this rule uh, to the transaction? So it doesn't really matter for us here because I only have one, one condition. So I'm gonna say all. The default for the condition will be the description typically but you could also have the bank text. Now these two are kind of similar in nature. So you might want to like test out between them, between the two of them, because obviously you got the description here and then you've got the, the bank, the bank text, which is basically similar to the description. So if you apply out a rule and it's not taking, meaning you think the rule should be applied, but it's not being applied, try switching from the description to the bank text or vice versa. We can also make a rule by amount and we'll talk more about those kind of conditions when you might want to do that in a future presentation. But in essence, for example, if you bought something from like a, a warehouse store or like an office supplies, one condition for amount you could imagine would be that if it's over a certain dollar amount, maybe you apply a rule that it goes into equipment or possibly if it's under a certain dollar amount, that's when you apply the rule going to say supplies. We'll talk more about that in the future, bringing it back to the description for this one. Now the description that we have, notice it pulled in the whole thing, this whole this whole memo kind of thing. So I don't need that whole thing in general. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically delete everything down to if it just says SoCal gas, that's all I need to apply the rule. I don't need I don't need everything in it. Also, I only need it to contain that information. I don't need it to to have the whole the thing exactly so it doesn't contain if it doesn't contain you could apply that rule that it's not there which again might be more specific if you had multiple items you're entering or is it exactly that i don't want it to be exactly that i want it to just include that in order to apply this rule to that transaction so that's going to be our conditions so then assign so what are you going to do if this condition is met then what what should quickbooks do you're gonna assign it to the expense or it's gonna be a transaction type of an expense. In other words, if you look at your forms, if I go to the second tab over here and hit the hit the, uh, the, the hamburger, go into the new tab, these are our, our forms. So even though I'm not using an expense form or a deposit form or a check form, QuickBooks will create those forms from the bank feeds so that when I go back into the end result, the financial statements and drill back down on it, it will not go to the bank feeds as we see them in the bank feed data input, but to a form, the forms are what are used by default to create financial transactions. So we're gonna say there it is, the category or expense account, you can think of it, or, or chart of account. The account will be utilities. The payee is gonna be SoCal Gas Company. You wanna make sure to have that if you can, because that gives you an added level of detail. And then the memo down below is being pulled in, which could give you some more detail about this transaction as well. 
add this memo to all matching transactions. So, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna allow it to apply its own memo and automatically confirm transactions this rule applies to. So in other words, do you want it to apply the rule and automatically pull it into the system without you even having to approve it? Or possibly, and I'm gonna turn this off for now, I would like you to apply the rule, but then I would like to double check it. And I would recommend doing that at least for a month, possibly a couple months or whatnot. And after that, then go in and possibly turn this back on. But I kind of like having it off so that I can go in, it can apply the rule out and I can at least click it off and confirm it so I can at least review <laughs> the money that's going out because that at least allows me to glance and say, well, are they paying me more for the utility company? Are they charging more? I can look at the bill before I, I, I approve it. So I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna save it. And the rule has then been applied. So now if we go back in here and I sort this, it's, it's gonna be sorted by description so I can find these ones that are linked together. And if I go down, I'm gonna look at those, those three items. So here's the SoCal gas down here and you can see the rule is now being applied. So there are the three rules. I can add them then on the right hand side. We also see a tab now for the rules because I have a rule and there's the rule. There's the rules. And so we can go in there and we can edit the rule if we need to, if it's not as specific or not as broad as we need, we can go in and edit the rules at a later point in time. Back to the banking tab. So then if I wanted to add those three transactions, I could go down here, for example, and I can say, okay, I could put my cursor on this one and I can hold down the shift and select that one and I can accept or add them all at one time, or possibly I just want to add one of them, which is what I'm gonna do now, just so I can see these other rules that are being in there as we sort the data at a future point. So what's gonna happen when I add this then? It's gonna create an expense form, and the expense form will be a decrease to the checking account, that's what an expense form does, and the other side is gonna be going to the utility on the income statement decreasing net income. So let's go ahead and just add it on the, the right hand side. It's also gonna adjust to the vendor so I can see the vendor detail. And let's take a look at it. So now if I, if I look at then my balance sheet and I refresh it by running the report again, now I've got my checking account it has now appeared up top, which re remember is under the drop down because that's the type of account it is. And then we put the last four digits, imagining it's a, it's a mock last four digits of the number to identify it. And you might want to put the financial institution there too. And I'm going to go into it and then drill down on it. And there we have our form. Notice it's an expense type form, which is kind of like a check without the check number. It's a form that decreases the checking account. And if I go into that, it doesn't take me to the bank feed data input, but rather it creates the form that is used to create the financial transactions of a decrease to the checking account rather than a check form and expense form because it's an electronic transfer. So we've got the payee, the checking account up top, the payment date, and the other side going to the utility account down below creates it for us automatically. Clo closing this then back out. Now note again, if it wasn't, if we weren't dependent on the bank, feeds to do this, we would have entered the expense form on our end, used the bank feeds to match out the transaction that we entered into. But in this case, we're creating the financial statements and we made the expense form directly from the bank statement. All right, I'm going back up and I'm gonna go back into our reports. The other side you can see on the balance sheet to be in balance is in the equity section but it's in net income because the balance sheet is related to the income statement through the income statement rolling into net income or rolling into equity. So if we go then to the income statement on the right or profit and loss and I refresh this one, we then see that we have no income yet because we haven't added anything on the income side. We've got our utilities down here. If I go into it, drilling back down, back to the source document, it's gonna create that expense form again. The other side, the split account being the checking account. Going back up, going back then to our report, you can see that we currently have net income, a loss in this case of the 3280. That loss is of course rolling into the balance sheet. There it is on the balance sheet. If I was to change the date range up top, it would roll into the equity. In other words, if I made this 010122 to uh, 123122, run it, we get the same thing, but down here, that net income now rolled into equity 
That's kind of how the income statement is related to the balance sheet. If I was to change the dates on the income statement up top to 010122 to 1231.22 and run that, there would be nothing in it because we'd start over. That's the closing process that QuickBooks is in essence doing for us. All right, let's bring it back. Let's go from 010121 to 1231.21, run it back to the tab to the left balance sheet. Let's bring this back to 010121 to 1231.21, run it. Then let's go to the tab to the left. I'm now in, this is in the accounting view because you'll recall I switched it over. I want to go into the expenses on the left hand side, which would be in the get pay or pay tab. If you were in the business view, I'm going to close up the hamburger. And so now we've got our expenses. So you can see the expense form listed out here. And you can also see if I go into the vendors tab, then we have our vendor listed out SoCal Gas Company and I can go into the vendor and see the detail of that expense. I can also possibly run reports that, that are by vendor where I could not have done that if I did not add the vendor. So remember that you need to add the vendor and it's quite possible not to add the vendor because that's not something included simply from the bank feeds and QuickBooks will not require it. But if you don't add the vendor, then you'll lose this added level of financial statement detail. You'll still have your financial statements. It'll still create this transactions. Your balance sheet will still balance, no problem. It's not, it's not the end of the world but you won't have the added detail of being able to sort your transactions by who you paid. If you wanna like look at all the, everything you paid to this particular vendor, that could be useful. Let's go back to the first tab and let's do it again. This time I'm gonna look at Verizon, which is a telephone company, and I'm gonna to try to add that one. Now again, they put it to the wrong place because they tried to help us out, but that's wrong. And it's wrong, I'm, I'm not blaming QuickBooks. I was like, where did QuickBooks get that? But I deleted the whole general ledger account, so I can't really blame them on messing it up, but it's wrong in any case. So we're gonna go into it. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say the dates there. I'm gonna add a new vendor. I'm gonna copy it if I can from something in the memo. So the memo includes what I would like to add the vendor for. Be careful adding vendors, by the way, too, because you might have the vendor already in the system in a slightly different format in the system so you don't want to add like a whole bunch of vendors that are just different variants of the same vendors for example you don't want to add verizon wireless and verizon and verizon wireless payments and have three vendors that are in essence the same vendor unless you tactically have some reason to do that so make sure that the vendor is not already included if it's not the first month of operations make sure that you put the appropriate vendor name when you're starting so that you can use that going forward so i'm going to add the vendor as we go so adding the vendor, I'm not gonna add the details. That's all I want is that information. Vendor is what we want. So I'm gonna say, save that. It's not gonna go to the, to the services tab. I wanna make another one, which is going to be the telephone company. And I think because I switched it over to the accounting view, I am in essence in the accounting view here. So I'm gonna try to add a new one and see if it's an easier process. So now I'm basically in the accounting view and I would recommend basically using the accounting view until they fix i would think fix the process of the of the other view not having basically this window to add new accounts when you're trying to add accounts just my opinion if anybody cares not many people do but i give my opinion anyways because i feel like it's important so i'm anyways i'm going to go down here and go to expenses and then we're going to say this is going to be telephone you could put it into utilities again maybe for the sub account sub accounts not all that important let's call it doesn't do, a, doesn't do a lot of change uh, to what we're doing here, but I'm gonna make it utilities. And then I'm not gonna put it under utilities. I'm gonna make one called telephone because I would like it broken out separately. Again, this is a personal choice. You could put it under utilities as well if you wanted to, or you could make a sub account of a utilities account, the, the utilities being the, care, the parent account, sub account, telephone, possibly electric and gas. It really depends on what you prefer in terms of how much detail you want versus not want. There's no overlying rule that you, that you need to have. It's really about internal decision making generally for the most part. Okay, let's go ahead and save it and close it. There we have that. Memo looks good. We're not gonna attach anything. We're gonna create a rule. So let's say we're gonna create a rule. I need a rule. I'm gonna call it the same name, which is Verizon Wireless. So naming it by the vendor is often useful or one convention that you can use that's quite common. 
It's going to be a money out rule because clearly we're paying. It's going to go to all bank accounts, even though I only have one, because every time I pay something to Verizon Wireless, I would think it would go to the utilities expense. It doesn't matter if I have any or all here because all conditions will be will need to be met considering I only have one condition. We'll talk about more complex conditions later. You can pull it from the description or possibly the bank text. I'm going to keep the, con the description now. If it doesn't do what I want, I'll toggle back and forth between those two. I just want it to contain not to be exactly what is in th is in this next field because I don't want I want it to be able to make sure to pick it up. So all I have in this next field is Verizon Wireless. So as long as it contains that, then I, they should apply the rule. What should it do if it applies this rule? It should make an expense type of form. That's the form that's going to record the transaction. It should record the category or account, in other words, to telephone. And the payee should be the Verizon wireless, that being the vendor. Then the memos down below. Add this memo to all. No, I'm going to let it pull the, the same memo. I'm not going to have it automatically apply out, but I would like to just verify it, give that final click to apply it out. I'll save it and close it. Going to sort it now by... We're going to sort this by description now so we can see these items. So I'm going to go then down. We'll look at the telephones. That's going to be towards the bottom here. Or actually, we're looking at Verizon. That's way at the bottom. So there they are. So there's the ones. And so now I could select all three of them and add them according to this rule. Or I can, I'm just going to add the one so I can see these rules and I'll keep adding the rules at a later point in time. So I'm actually going to add this one right here for some reason, the middle one, because I want to match it up to something else. So I'm going to add this one. And that then, of course, is going to bring it into our financial statements with an expense form, which decreases the checking account. Other side going to the telephone expense as we assigned it to go. And the, the vendor will be uh, applied as well. Let's go to the balance sheet and look at it. Run it. Run in. Then we're going to go into the checking account. Now we've got two amounts that should be in here. I'm going to drill down on the end result, the promised land of the balance sheet. These two transactions are the first to have made it into the promised land from Bank Feed Limbo. It's not so bad. Bank Feed's not Bank Feed Limbo's not so bad. As long as you just follow follow the light, then you can get there. That's what these two are saying. That's their testimony to it in any case. So we've got this one. There's the expense closing this back out. And then we're going to scroll back up and say, let's go back then to our report. And down below, we got net income the other side. So we're in balance. If I go back to the tab to the right, then income statement, run that again, run it. So now we've got the telephone and the utilities down here. If I go to the second tab, I can look at my vendors. I can open up the handbook. And we're in the we're in the accounting view this time. And if I go into the expenses, I can see my transactions. Notice the transactions, by the way, would be uh, in 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 the overview tab. I believe that's a little bit different in the accounting view. In other words, the expenses would be up in the in that area. So we'd have our two expense type of forms. And then we've got the vendor uh, the vendor section where now we have our two vendors. So if I wanted to see how much I paid Verizon. I can go into the vendor information, which I would only have if I had taken the time to add the vendor name before I recorded the transaction. And if I take the time to do that on the first time and take the time to make a rule, that then added information, which I might as well have, will be there in the future. So those are going to be kind of like the basic transactions, the easiest ones, those repetitive ones are the easiest ones to kind of to, to put into place. We'll continue to add some more of these, adding a bit more complexity to some of the more complex transactions as we go. And uh, obviously your numbers will not match our numbers here as you as you practice with whatever data that you have to practice with. But that's the general idea.